2023 meant serious business. Thankfully, we had Gen Z to lighten things up. These fascinating beings were born between the late 1990s and early 2010s. Last year, Gen Z entered the mainstream. They defined some of the biggest trends, all while confusing us. Basic handsets made a comeback. Dumb phones became the smarter choice for Gen Z. Some youngsters won the economy by living the dink life. Dink refers to couples with double income and no kids, D-I-N-K. Throngs of Gen Z enter the workforce. They fuel the debate over the 70-hour work week, decided to do the bare minimum at work and killed off the OG work buzzwords. Meanwhile, some tortured their own taste buds by trying what they called white people food. That's what young Chinese called Western meals, which they deemed, and I'm quoting, the food of suffering. Here's a look at the biggest trends that define 2023. Dumb phones may be making people smarter. Study after study has shown that smartphones adversely affect our intelligence levels. They also reduce our attention span. The so-called doom scroll is often blamed for this. You know what's doom scroll? It refers to the infinite feed that doesn't end, no matter how much you scroll through it. Social media posts just keep coming. The liking, the sharing, the commenting then takes over. And this has reached such a point that it seems like smartphones have become the superior species that control humans and not the other way around. So it's not shocking that people are returning to dumb phones. They say brick phones are making people more productive, more proactive. Some are even calling it the dopamine diet. DINK is an acronym. It stands for households with a double income and no kids. D-I-N-K, double income, no kids. Basically, a working couple without children. DINKs are all the rage these days. Out of different types of families, child-free couples have the most average savings and the highest median net worth. To put it simply, Beyonce sang about the cost of living crisis. She would probably say something like, who run the economy? Dinks. But remember, not all dinks are created equal. There are also dink wards, meaning double income, no kids with a dog. D-I-N-K-W-A-D. Then there are dink wards, double income, no kids with a house. D-I-N-K-W-A-H. So the budgeting differs. But no matter the category, this trend is picking up the world over. The world over, people continue to put in the hours. They aren't forced to. They want to. Many of them remain alive, kicking and successful. Because for those who want to put in the hours, science has a cheat code. The only way to sustain working incredibly high number of hours is by having fun. Sounds ironic, I know. But psychologically, Time is not the same for everyone. Yes, same hours, same days each week, but we experience time differently. And when we're having fun, it passes by really fast, like when hanging out with friends or working on a very interesting project. Time flies. So the key to working a lot is having fun with it, enjoying what you do. Instead of all work and no play, try a cocktail of both. It can be a powerful juice latest trend slash talking point on social media. It's called the lazy girl and it's the opposite of what we saw a decade back. The 2010s were the decade of the girl boss. The overambitious woman, her goal was to lean in, to do more at work and then some. But now we're in the era of anti-work, the great resignation. Studies say six in ten workers apparently don't give everything they've got anymore. And the result is this, the girl boss has bid us goodbye. Work life has a new reigning queen. And the so-called lazy girls are taking over social media. They're chasing what's called a lazy girl job. Slay, serve, survive. Lukewarm regards. Hasta la pasta. No, I'm not glitching. I'm simply sharing email sign-offs written by the young workers of today. For most of the world, Gen Z speak may as well be parcel tongue. You know, the language of serpents from Harry Potter, parcel tongue. Gen Z seem to have a language of their own, which not only transforms one day and one reel at a time, but it is killing off the good old OG work buzzwords. 
A new Barclays survey is out. It says 71% workers believe the young are changing the language of the workplace. 41% say yours truly is dying. 36% say yours sincerely has been given a death sentence. Now when a bank says that formal corporate lingo is dying, you know that something is up. To live is to suffer. This is a famous quote by Friedrich Nietzsche. Many would agree. Now, this suffering can take various forms. But for the Chinese, it often takes the avatar of what they call white people food. Seriously, that's what they have named Western packed lunches, white people food. Plain ingredients like raw vegetables, sliced meats and crackers. The Chinese are trying this food, then letting their innermost emotions run free by roasting the meals, not in the way you'd imagine. They say, this is the lunch of suffering, or this meal shows what it's like to be dead, and this trend is going viral.